Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you today about the mercury toxicity in fish. A recent U.S. geological survey measured 300 streams, small streams across America, and found that more than two-thirds of the fish in those streams had levels of mercury that were above the, the safe consumption level established by the EPA. Reservoirs and lakes typically have more than half the fish exceeding the acceptable levels. We have an issue with fish, and it's not just fish from lakes and streams in our oceans. It's really all fish are, are risky for us to eat. And it's very, very important. The, the, the levels have gotten so high that 15% of newborns, it's carried in the fetus into babies, 15% of newborns born today in America have levels of mercury that put them at risk for developing neurological conditions. It's really important. The FDA, back in 2004, put out a public advisory for women of all, of, of women of reproductive age, that they should not eat any swordfish, shark, mackerel, or tilefish, fish that are on the top of the food chain that carry sometimes 10,000 times the amount of mercury that's in the water that they swim in. So, so this mercury issue is, is a big deal, something that we have to be aware of. Mercury, uh, you know, mercury toxicity can cause neurological conditions, it can cause immune issues, psychological problems, learning disorders, hair loss, numbness in your hands and feet. It has a host of problems and it's hard for the body to get rid of it. You know, I talk a lot about making sure your digestion is good because if your digestion is not functioning well, you don't detoxify well. We have the ability to process the, the mercury out of our body. In fact, studies have shown that when you stop eating fish, your mercury levels go down. So that's a good preventative right there. You decrease the amount of fish that you eat. Make sure you know where it's coming from. In the article associated with this video, there's a whole list of fish from all over the world that you could eat that show their mercury levels. Those the fish with the least amount of mercury to the fish that you should absolutely avoid. Farmed fish can be good, but they have sometimes PCBs, chemicals, antibiotics. It's, it's hard for, for them to grow fish in water, that's salt water, that's not somehow man-made and affected in a negative way. So it's a challenging issue that we all have to be aware of. You know, the, 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 the mad hatter, you've all heard about that, that was something that these people who made hats went a little nuts. They, went, they had neurological conditions, they kind of went crazy, and that's because they would rub mercury, a mercury solution on the pelts of animals to cure them, and they would end get, getting that, get that in their skin, and, uh, and then would get into, their, into the air, and they would breathe that, and would cause severe problems. You know, when we were kids, we used to play with mercury, roll it around the floor, and it was just a lot of fun. Well, little did we know how much of a problem that is. But the biggest source of our mercury today is not from amalgams in our mouth or, or food sources, but it really comes from the coal mine plumes that, that come from the electrical plants. Many of the electrical plants in our country use coal, and the coal burns very hot, usually oil furnaces, and that coal, that, that mercury, gets into the atmosphere and it drips into the water, into the soil. So it pretty much puts us all at risk and it's really important for us to know, you know, and fish is clearly the number one source of our, of our contamination of mercury. Sushi, for example, the, there's a, uh, the New York Times and a website called gotmercury.org did a undercover evaluation of, of, of sushi bars and fish around the country, and they measured 184 samples of fish, and every one of them had mercury, averaging about 0.5 parts per million. The legal action limit is 1.0 parts per million of mercury, and 20% of the sushi and 20% of the tuna had over 1.0 parts per million, which was a legal action amount of mercury in your sushi and in your tuna. So really important for us to realize that if we're gonna eat a lot of fish or a lot of sushi, you better maybe add some chelating agents to your diet. Three diet sources of chelators, garlic, really great chelator. It's been shown to chelate lead, mercury, and cadmium, very, very effective chelator. The second source of a dietary source 
is cilantro, coriander. Uh, it's been shown to actually pull mercury out of liquid or aqueous or water-based solutions, so it can take that mercury out and take it out of a, a liquid solution, which is important. And then chlorella, which is an algae, that's been shown to actually pull it out of your gut. So three important sources of chelators that you can get in your diet. And if you're gonna be a fish eater, boy, I tell you, make sure you're eating the fish on the safe level and the list associated with this video. Make sure you add some chelators. And in the article associated with this video, I give you some options and some suggestions of how to get some natural chelators that you can do orally to rid yourself of a mercury toxicity. If you have some of the symptoms I mentioned and you eat a lot of fish, get a blood test. Find out if you have mercury toxicity and then look for uh, either an intravenous source of, of uh, chelator or now there are some very effective oral chelators that I talk about in the article associated with this video. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard.